Today's video is inspired by a question that was asked on Post Pro List, and the question itself is a little lengthy, so I'll sum it up for you. Pretty much they're working on videos for a hockey team, and they wanted an easy way to store all of the different highlights and be able to access them and search for them in the uh, database at a later point in time. So let me quickly show you how you would do something like that. Now, it really depends on how you're going about uh, storing all of these. If you're working by yourself, you might do it the second way here, but I want to show you if you have like an assistant or you're just going through these to find like the highlights, uh, how we can do this. So when we're working on, we're right now on the media page. If we take a look at one of our clips, I just have some stock footage here. Uh, and let's say we wanted to store just this shot of the bay here uh, as maybe a highlight of the team. So we would do I for in at the beginning of our clip, come to wherever the end of that clip is, let's say right there, hit O for out. So now we have this little uh, range here. If we drag it down, it's going to make a sub clip. So we could say, okay, this is the bay. So now we have another clip in here of the bay. Let's go through here and find another one. And hmm. let's do this one here of the park. All right, so again, we're gonna do I for in, O for out, drag it down and call this park. So now we have uh, a couple of clips. Let's say that these are our highlights. Now, if we were the editor and we were going to edit, we could easily come over here and say, okay, let's grab the park clip. And now we have the park clip. Let's grab the bay clip. Now we have the bay clip. It's just similar to the highlights that are in the hockey film. Now. These clips currently are just in our media pool with or in that main project. So they're only going to be searchable if we click our little search thing here and let's go to clip name. If I type in here bay, we can get the bay. And if we went in here and typed in park, we could get the park clip. Um, so that is just within this one particular project. So like, let's say we have multiple projects, how would we be able to go and look at those in other projects? So to do this, we're gonna have to open up the power bins. So the power bins are bins that are stored and saved within the whole project library. So we could simply go like this and let's just call this sky view. That's what these all are. And I'm just going to undo this and let's go into our, uh, these two clips here. I'll just highlight them and bring them into our sky view. So now they're here in our sky view and we'll jump to another project here, but let's add another one in. So let's say we're on the edit page. Let's say you're not, you don't have an assistant and you're working on the timeline and you wanna be able to add one of these in. So typically we work with the preview monitor and the uh, program monitor. So let's just click on our clip to see it over here. We're good, we would pretty much do the same exact thing um, that we would do, uh, that we were doing over there. So we'd first click our, uh, our in and our out, and we would typically just bring that down and then have that as our clip. But we can also bring it over here, drop that in, and then it's asking for a name. So we'll just call this the city view. So now that we have all of these over here, we can pull them from over here, right? And easily access them. But let's open up a new project. So let's go new project and we'll just save that, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, and we will just open up another project. So now this new project here has nothing in it, but we can come down here to the sky view. And now we have all three of those clips that we can bring in and we have them. Now the one big caveat here is all of this process that we just did isn't destructible, isn't destructive at all. So they're all accounting for that clip being in the same exact spot. So if you start to move media around on your computer, these are not going to be linked up correctly anymore because they didn't, they're just uh, pulling portions of that clip wherever it is on your system. So I would say move everything and structure the media wherever you want it to be on your system, leave it there permanently because anytime that you pull from any of these bins, it's always going to be looking for wherever it was previously, previously at when you brought it into the bin. So I think we can see this somewhere in here. If we open this up, 
yeah, it's saying, see, it's in the download path, right? So if I was to remove that from the download path, all of these would end up being offline. So that's the one caveat uh, to this. Well, no matter what, that's, you know, something that you would have to be mindful of because DaVinci Resolve is not just going to find, you know, these clips amongst hundreds of thousands of other clips on your computer. So that's how you would go about doing this. Hopefully these answered your questions. Um, oh, and then this is also searchable as well. So you can easily just open this up, come into your highlights, and then, you know, in here, just go in clip name, because that's what these are, names of clips. And then you can just type in here park, and then you would get the park or however you had it structured. You can make multiple bins here, different players, different teams, whatever it may be, different locations, and then you can search through uh, those as well. So hopefully that helps. But with that being said, um, only other thing is anyone that's watching this on YouTube, if you're interested, you could come over to um, post pro list. This is a website dedicated to post-production professionals. It doesn't matter if you're doing DaVinci Resolve or any other piece of software, uh, you could come over here and, uh, chat with other post-production professionals. But with that being said, my name's Justin. Thanks so much for watching till next one, guys. Peace.